Hello, my name is Chris Elston from the University of Edinburgh, and this is Zoom Obscura. We are present in front of the camera all the time. There, as a subject ready to be analyzed and defined. The software generates a doppelganger of the user by projecting their image into the StyleGAN2 FFHQ model. Zoom Obscura is a project that aims to give agency and control to the users of video conferencing technology such as Zoom while still allowing them to participate in online spaces and debates, enabling us to negotiate our own presence and our own value in these new spaces forced on us by pandemic living and working. The project brought together artists, academics, hackers, designers and creative technologists to develop critical interventions that make the problematic workings of these technologies legible to wider audiences while empowering users to experiment with and control how their personal data, be that visual, audio or textual, manifests in online spaces. After three online workshops based around ideation, prototyping and presentation, the seven commissioned artists presented their work at a launch event in April 2021. Martin Disley uses machine learning and a generative adversarial network to conjure up a deep fake doppelganger that creates a continuum of difference between the closest match to the input face that the network can produce and the median face at the centre of the network's distribution. The avatar created, which is the one that I'm using now, is a close enough likeness that people will recognise who it is, but different enough that computers won't. The WiseHire Zoom Mod Pack enhances the theatricality of video calling, providing users ways to control their entrances and exits, and challenging the normalisation of front row visibility and constant surveillance. Ilsa Powers enacts a masquerade call with her custom-made masking emoticons exploring ways of expressing emotions on video calls without leaking data and compromising privacy. Michael Baldwin's piece, Group Dialogues, is a playful yet incisive exploration of temporality in video calling, playing with concepts such as time lag, interruption and responsibility. Group Dialogues cleverly shows us how our behaviour and etiquettes are influenced by technologies such as Zoom. Um, uh, uh, because uh, I'm pointing straight. Uh. Using a live audio score, how to touch through the screen or the erotics of discontinuity is an interactive piece by Andrea Zavala, which invites participants to discover ways of feeling connected while being physically apart and being present in the digital space of a Zoom meeting whilst also remaining unseen. You're facing others, visible to others. Freeze in that moment, but keep breathing. Look at them. Are you endlessly stuck in Zoom meetings that you wish you could just walk away from? Yes. It's Not Really Me is a comedy sketch by Lloyd Henning and Peter Sutton of Fox Dog Studios. Lloyd and Peter got fed up of the exhaustion of being permanently alert on video calls, so built a series of interventions to enable users to fake or disrupt their presence on screen. And finally, in Paul O'Neill's work for Ruth and Violette, a World War II code poem reveals itself as both a modern day romance and tragedy and a contemporary subversion of networks communications. So that was Zoom Obscura. And this is a paper that my co-authors and I have written about these seven artist projects 
reflecting on each of them as powerful examples of counterfunctional design. In the paper, we say much more about the origins of Zoom Obscura and how we work with the artists to produce the work. But here, I'd just like to focus on our analysis of counterfunctionality and what that might mean for uh, futures of video conferencing. So counterfunctional design was developed by James Pierce and Eric Powers in these two wonderful papers at DISC in 2014. Fundamentally critical, counterfunctional design is most easily understood through the schema that they provide to encourage the practice. It begins that normally one can do something, a positive function with a technology. Now one cannot do something, a, a, a countered positive function. But now one might not do something else, a new counter function. Crucially, the approach here is both critical and adversarial, resisting or contesting a presumed affordance or use of a technology, but in doing so, should also be generative of something else, creating and allowing for new experiences and affordances. So let me illustrate that with a couple of examples from the projects. So It's Not Really Me by Fox Dog Studios replaces live video with pre-record canned responses. What this means is that normally one is viewing a live video stream. Now, one may not be viewing a live video stream, but now one might politely disengage from a tiring call when not required. Group Dialogue by Michael Baldwin experiments with interrupting and redirecting conversation through Zoom. And here, normally one can rely on audio filtering, that little yellow box around a Zoom call, for a clear conversation. Now, through Group Dialogues, conversation is deliberately disrupted, but instead, one might pay more attention to how conversation is constructed. So in this kind of way, we identify some key strategies through which it's possible to counter the surveillance tendencies of video conferencing software, and by which we might aim to offer users greater agency in how they present themselves. We might, for example, look for ways to reduce visibility and to resist the zoom window and the bounds of that, counter the, the, the presumption of a face in a zoom window, switching off entirely or introducing new temporalities, countering this liveness. In the paper, we also discuss um, ways in which we might design alternative ways of being with our video conferencing as a ubiquitous part of our everyday lives. So please read more in the paper and I encourage you to visit the Zoom Obscura website. We're also on Twitter at Zoom Obscura. I want to thank sincerely my co-authors, David Chatting, Mike Duggan, Andrew Dwyer and Pip Thornton. I'd also like to thank the funders who supported this work and thank you for watching.